there is really not much of a clan structure in the mainland or on the lowlands, but certainly in the Hebridean Isles, inner and outer, and in the far north of Scotland, there still is a fully functioning clan system. You have to understand that for the outer Hebridean Islands, they were only governed by the government since the mid-1980s. Up until that point, they were governed by the lords of the isle, by the clans, the clan chiefs. Welcome to the A Midlife Traveler podcast, where we want you to go see the world, discover interesting stories about people, places, and practical advice to help you plan your next vacation. Hey, let's go see the world. Hey, everyone. Hello. And thank you so, so much for joining us today to listen to the A Midlife Traveler podcast. We are in season one, which is mostly about Scotland and learn about Scotland through the voice and the opinions and the minds of a Scotsman named James. My name is Laura. I am your host. And today's episode is a really good one. It's a really good one. Actually, it's a follow-up episode. The one that should be right before this talked about the Highland Games and the Gathering of the Clans. And it was James talking about the Highland Games and the Gathering of the Clans and how the games are different and the games are people dressing up and reminiscing about their past, whereas the Gathering of the Clans is the root historical, you know, beginning of the Highland Games. And that's a very serious, very serious competition, even today in the Highlands and Islands of Scotland. So this piece here that you're going to hear is James again talking about someone who's competed and being chosen and selected and the importance of competing at the Gathering of the Clans. And he's speaking as a person who has been selected, who has done this, who is part of a clan, who cares about his clan, who cares about the clan chieftain and, and you know, helping and representing him. So... Here you go. You can listen to a clip. It's uh, it's a recording that was taken in the field while we were driving through Scotland. And it's James talking about his experience and being chosen to compete in the gathering of the clans and the importance of the clan structure. I hope you enjoy this recording and thanks again for listening. <laughs> um so you know it's 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 not difficult um to play the games it, it's not a, a massive massive challenge the issue is or where the nervousness is is that although if i'm getting selected although i'm playing it i'm playing it in place of my clan chief so it's not me that's going to if i lose it's not me that loses it's the clan chief so that's where some of the young men certainly I get a bit nervous. Not that not that not that Farker cares anyway, but it you know, I care. He he spends his whole life making decisions to benefit my family. So on that particular day, this is one day that he gets to sit down and allow his clan to do the work for him. So so I'm always nervous about letting letting the clan the clan chief down. I don't want to do that. It's never happened anyway. <laughs> it's so I mean a lot of people there is really not much of a clan structure in the mainland or on the lowlands, but certainly in the Hebridean Isles, inner and outer, and in the far north of Scots Scotland, there still is a fully functioning clan system. You have to understand that for the Outer Hebridean Islands, they were only governed by the government since the mid-1980s. Up until that point, they were governed by the lords of the isle, by the clans, the clan chiefs. And that was right up until, you know, not that long ago. So, um, we've always had that system uh, up here in, in, in Scotland. It was just after the, the clearances, it, 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 you couldn't really openly 
being a clan because you could be punished for it. 